In this video, I will explain the basics about AI and neural networks. The main focus will be to understand how a neural network works and how it can be trained to, for example, identify an object in an image. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is a broad field that is focused on creating systems or machines that can perform tasks that typically require human intelligence. Machine learning is a subset of AI where models are trained on some data. These trained models can then be used to, for example, identify patterns or to make predictions. One machine learning method that can perform deep learning is called neural networks. These networks can be trained to perform, for example, face recognition or clone voices. Neural networks are also used to create large language models, such as ChatGPT, that can predict the most relevant words or phrases in a given context. Since neural networks can perform deep learning, which means that they can learn almost anything, it is today a central method for many AI applications. A neural network consists of input nodes, one or several hidden layers, and output nodes. These nodes are sometimes called neurons, which explains why it is called a neural network. Since this network has more than one hidden layer, it is defined as a deep neural network. By training this neural network, it can, for example, be used to predict if someone has a certain disease. For example, these input nodes may take three measurements that we do to predict if a patient is infected with bacteria or a virus. Suppose that a person enters the hospital. We check the age and the concentrations of the CRP and PCT from a blood sample. Then we plug in the corresponding values in the input nodes and use the network to tell if the person is infected with bacteria or a virus. But how do neural networks actually work? To explain this, I will show a simple example of how a neural network can be trained to identify if these images contain an odd or an even digit. An image is represented by a grid of pixels. For example, this image has 4 pixels in width and 5 pixels in height. In total, this image therefore consists of 20 pixels. Each pixel in an image holds a specific value that corresponds to a certain color. In this example, a 1 represents the orange color, whereas a 0 represents the white color. So, basically, a computer can convert this grid with numbers into the following image. We will now train a simple artificial neural network so that it can predict if an image contains an odd or an even digit. For simplicity, we do not use any hidden layers for this example. This network has 20 input nodes, because each image contains 20 pixels, and one output node that computes the probability that the image contains an even digit. Note that the probability is a value between 0 and 1, which in this case means that the value of the output node will be between 0 and 1. If this probability is greater than 0.5, the network will predict that the image contains an even digit. And if this probability is less than or equal to 0.5, the network will predict that the image contains an odd digit. Before we start to train this network, we will tell the network that these images contain an even digit, which means that the target value in the output node for these images is 1. We also tell the network that these images contain an odd digit, which means that the target value in the output node for these images should be equal to zero. When we tell the network what's right and wrong before it starts learning, it is called supervised learning because we can supervise how well the network performs since we know the correct answer. Training a neural network usually begins by setting random values for the so-called weights that determine how the input signals should affect the output. Note that the values of these weights have been randomly generated. The weights are used in the following equation. These 20 input nodes are denoted as x in this equation, whereas the weights are denoted by w. 
In total, the network therefore has 21 weights to tune on. Let's plug in the weights in this equation, where this is the so-called bias weight, and this is the weight that is associated with the first input node, whereas this is the weight that is associated with the second input node, and this is for the third input node, and so forth. The network will now train on this data. It therefore plugs in the data of the first image in its input nodes, like this. The input nodes will receive the value 1 from the pixels with an orange color, and the value 0 from the pixels with a white color. The network then plugs in the values from the corresponding input nodes into the equation, and computes the following value. This value is now used to calculate the value of the output node. A neural network uses some sort of activation function to compute the output node, and in this example it uses the so-called sigmoid activation function where E is the Euler's number, and Z is the value it just calculated. If we set Z to 0, the function will result in a value of 0 0.5, and if we set Z to a negative value, the function will result in a value that is smaller than 0 0.5. For large negative numbers, the function will produce a value that is close to 0, and for large positive numbers, the function will generate the value that is close to 1. So, this means that this function will convert any value from this calculation into a value that goes between 0 and 1. Now, if we set Z to negative 1.8 and do the math, the activation function will result in a value of about 0.14 which is the computer probability that the image contains an even digit. Since we have told the network that this data comes from an image that contains an even digit, it understands that this probability needs to be corrected, because when this probability is less than 0.5, the network will incorrectly predict that the image contains an odd digit. So, how can the network correct this error so that this probability is greater than 0 0.5. Well, it can go back and somehow change these weights, so that this calculation results in a positive value, because that will result in a probability value that is greater than 0 0.5. Suppose that the network changes this weight from negative 1.4 to positive 2.0. That change will result in a value that is now equal to positive 1.6 instead of negative 1.8, which will result in a probability that is now larger than 0.5. Since the value in the output node is now greater than 0.5, the network will now correctly predict that the image contains an even digit. When the network goes back like this and changes the values of the weights to correct an error, that is called backpropagation. So, to make the correct predictions, the network should generate a positive value here, for all even digits, because that will result in a probability value that is larger than 0.5. In comparison, for the images containing an odd digit, the network should result in a negative value here, so that the probability is less than 0.5. Next, the network takes the values in the pixel from the image that represents a 1, and inserts the corresponding zeros and 1s into the input nodes. This means that the network changes the values in this calculation, so that they corresponds to the values in the input nodes. If we do the math, we get a value of positive 2.9, which will result in a probability value of 0 0.95. This is obviously an error that needs to be corrected because the image contains an odd digit. Suppose that the network changes this weight from 1.9 to negative 5.0. That will result in that the sum is now negative. 
and that the probability is now less than 0.5, which means that the network now correctly predicts that the image contains an odd digit. Next, the network plugs in the pixel values of the image that contains a 2, which results in a probability value of 0.08, which is again an incorrect prediction because this value should be greater than 0.5. The network must therefore somehow change the weights so that this value is positive. By, for example, changing this weight from negative 1.1 to positive 4.0. The network now correctly predicts that the image contains an even digit because the probability value is now greater than 0.5. Next, the network takes the values of the pixels in the image that represents a 3. Without changing the weights this time, the network now correctly predicts that the image contains an odd digit, because the probability value is less than 0.5. This means that the network did not need to change the values of the weights this time, because it made the correct prediction. The same is also true for this image, because it results in a probability value larger than 0.5, which means that the network correctly predicts that the image contains an even digit. The network also correctly predicts this image as an odd digit. When the network takes this image, it results in a probability value of 0.5. Since this image contains an even digit, the network has to increase the probability value above 0.5 in order to make the correct prediction which can be done by increasing the value of this weight from, for example, 2.0 to 4.0, because the probability is now greater than 0.5. If we plug in this image, the network correctly predicts that it contains an odd digit. This image is also correctly predicted because it contains an even digit. Finally, this image is incorrectly predicted as an even digit, which can, for example, be fixed by reducing this weight from 1.6 to 0.6, because the probability is now less than 0.5. The network then starts over and plugs in the image that contains a zero, which is now correctly predicted as containing an even digit. The process in which the network plugs in the input data and computes the output, and changes the weights to correct for possible mistakes, is called training, because it is trained to make the correct predictions. The network is trained like this as long as it can no longer improve the predictions, which means that the error are as low as possible. Note that the bias weight would change all previous calculations. If we, for example, increase this value, all previous probability values will be shifted towards 1. This bias weight will also be adjusted during the training. During the training, many weights are actually changed at the same time, so that the images with an even digit result in probabilities close to 1, whereas the images with an odd digit result in probabilities close to 0, according to some loss function that I will explain in another video. If we let the network train on this data, which means that it will change the weights thousands of times, it might end up with the following values. The values of these weights are optimal for this example, because if we plug in any image that contains an odd digit in this network, the network will result in an output value that is very close to zero, and if we would plug in any image with an even digit, the network will result in a value that is close to 1. Note that the probability values are now close to 1 or 0 when we use the optimized weights. For example, the reason why this weight has a large positive value is because 4 out of 5 even digits have an orange color in this pixel, which means that the pixel contains the value 1, whereas all odd digits have a white color in this pixel which is associated with the value 0. So, if this pixel contains the value 1, we are 100% certain that the image contains an even digit, which explains why the network puts a large positive weight on this input node. 
because it will then send a strong signal to the output node, so that it results in an increased probability that the image contains an even digit. Once we have trained a neural network on these images, we can use it to predict if a new image contains an odd or an even digit. Suppose that we would use the trained network to predict if this image contains an odd or an even digit. We therefore plug in the values in the corresponding pixels and do the math. Since the probability is less than 0.5, the network predicts that the image contains an odd digit, which seems reasonable because this image looks like a 9. The same principle works also for other types of images, where we can train the network on thousands of images that, for example, contain cars, rabbits and flowers. We can then use the trained network to tell if this image contains a car, a rabbit or a flower. If you'd like to learn more about neural networks, I suggest that you have a look at my basic video about artificial neural networks, which explains how the loss function works and how the hidden layers help the network to perform deeper learning. Then I suggest that you have a look at the video about gradient descent, which is kind of the engine during the training process. Once you get the basics, you can watch the following videos, which show how image classification is done with convolutional neural networks, and how autoencoders can be used to remove noise in an image, and how recurrent neural networks can be used to predict the future. Recurrent neural networks are, by the way, the basis for understanding language models that can, for example, predict the next word in a sentence. This was the end of this basic video about AI and neural networks. Thanks for watching.